Hello Soul Diggers, thank you for joining me for another episode and this week I get to interview one of my inspirations and friends, Melissa Wells. She is a best-selling author of The Goddess Revolution and Hungry for More. She's known worldwide for helping women to heal their relationship with food and their bodies and step into a powerful journey of self-love and self-discovery. She's currently writing her third book, and Mel is published with Hay House USA and the UK. She's also a TEDx speaker and has appeared on TV segments such as Loose Women and Good Morning La La Land, as well as being recognised in magazines such as Vogue, Cosmopolitan, Women's Health and Forbes for her work. She's also been asked to present at Google HQ in London for her work around self-love and personal growth for women. Mel devotes her life to studying spiritual and personal growth, sex, love, intimacy, and relationships, and is currently studying with the Tantric School of Integrated Sexuality as a love, sex, and relationship coach. This episode, I wish I would have heard this information even six to 12 months ago, because this area of sexuality and spirituality and feminism is something that I think is so shamed in today's world and in this episode we dive deep into why that is why is there such shame around sex how to connect with yourself sexually and and what that uncovers how spirituality and sexuality are so closely connected and how you can heal all those things to really embody your feminine power and step into and reclaim your sexuality. This is a juicy one. I'd love to know what you guys think. I absolutely loved it. Let's dive in. So welcome to the show, Melissa Wells. It's so good to have you here, welcome. Oh, Tim, I love you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. I am so excited to have you here on the podcast because many women like myself have grown up watching you on the TV screens in Hollyoaks. I was obsessed with Hollyoaks all my teenage years. <laughs> and um, we've modeled together, we've, 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 we've cocktailed together, we've sober raved together, and we've shared some really great experiences together. And now I'm so blessed to be in your Goddess Collective, which is an incredible collection of women all wanting to learn and grow and I am just so obsessed from learning from you oh that's so kind of you thank you so much well I've also loved cheering you on along your entrepreneurial journey with Arvon as well like I'm just seeing you step more and more into like this you know incredibly successful entrepreneur from back when we used to know each other as you know doing these kind of you know modeling gigs like I look at how far you've come and I'm like wow like super inspiring as well babe so thank you so much yeah you know people ask me all the time you know who inspires me and I'd say like five years ago it was you know people with the cars and the money and that live this kind of flashy lifestyle and I look at you and I'm like Melissa Wells is who (laughs) I aspire to be like because you are just you're just living this conscious connected life that's full of authenticity and I've witnessed you transform from, you know, being on the TV screens and kind of finding yourself and then now to be living into being a dog mom as well. Hey, sorry. Rio. Oh, he's so cute. Sorry. Yeah, Rio now has his own Instagram. He does. He's a famous dog already. Oh, thanks. But no, you have just really inspired me with your authenticity, how you're showing up online, especially with the whole feminine sexuality, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell me how you've got to where you are like what's your journey been yeah well I got into coaching uh you know quite a quite a number of years ago helping women heal from disordered eating and learn to love themselves that was really how I um, started growing my business and really started helping women change their lives that was kind of how I uh got to you know write my first book and then my second book and that's really how I what the foundation was that I built my business on and what I began to realize was all of the women that I was working with I was really helping them to love their bodies but there was always like this kind of shame piece around their sexuality and um it was like people would get to a point where like they really felt like they loved their bodies 
but when it came to like you know loving their yonis or like actually like being uh you know sexual or embracing their sexuality it was like this this kind of like next level that they had to break through and so I decided, well, like I really want to be able to support women on this journey, especially because a lot of women that have struggled with their relationship with food and with eating disorders do have sexual abuse or some kind of sexual trauma in their in their history. Not everyone, but definitely like uh, there's uh, there's a good good portion of people that that has. I mean, obviously, like one in three women has some kind of sexual trauma or or some kind of experience in her past. And even if you don't have that that kind of individual memory of something happening to you around your sexuality we've all like collectively picked up on this trauma of um you know women are you know sex is not something that we talk about it's something that's kept in the shadows women certainly don't touch themselves um you know our role as sexual beings as a woman is to please and pleasure the man and make sure that he is uh, that we're performing for them uh, we've got to be good at sex but not too sexual we don't want to be called a slut um, but also we we want to be seen as sexy by the opposite sex. So there's a lot of like confusing messages for women around sexuality. And I really decided um, this is something that I really want to be able to support women with. And I feel like in a quite a um, privileged position to be able to do that because I grew up in a household where my mum and dad were very open about sex. Like I've always been someone that likes talking about sex happy to bring it up, happy to be open and talk about it. Um, and so, I, you know, a lot of coaches don't want to go there, don't want to talk about it. I'm like, let's talk about it. Like, I'm more than happy to talk about it. So um, that's why I decided to like start doing this kind of coaching and holding space for women to really heal and reclaim their sexuality. On top of that, like as someone who is growing a business in personal development, I joined a lot of um, business trainings and masterminds and things like this. And I, I paid a lot of money to be in rooms with like, you know, very influential people that were helping me to grow my business. And like, I was in some of these rooms and I just felt like, do you know what? Like, you're giving me a lot of strategy, but like, I feel like it's really missing. There's a lack of like soul here and a real lack of like spirituality and a lack of like, you know, like you say that it's really about the people, but like what I'm really feeling from you is it's about numbers and sales. And I really wanted to um, create something different for, for high level women and entrepreneurs that have that success mindset, but don't want to like live their lives in this masculine mentality. And it's not even the divine masculine, it's this wounded masculine um, space of just like, you know, achievements and selling. And like you said, like getting the money and the flashy kind of things and it, with this kind of like missing piece to it. So I'm really, yeah, it's making me feel really happy to now be supporting conscious female entrepreneurs who want to rise, but do it in a really integrated, soulful, um, spiritual way without, you know, be able to grow their business without losing track of like their essence. I'm sat here just nodding like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much for just bringing this to the world because my goodness, like the same, you know, eight years ago when I started my business, it was like hustle and grind and like, yeah, hunger, hunger, hunger. And all the personal development was like mindset and like hustle and have four hours sleep. And I was like, there's got to be a better way than this. How can I like be in my feminine, but not also feel weak? And I kind of thought feminine was, was, was a weakness um so tell us more about that why why do women think that being feminine is weak well because we have lived in the patriarchal world for five thousand years we have really been taught in an indirect way that women are secondary to men and you know we see this in sexuality as well like we try and measure a woman's orgasm by comparing it to a man's when women's bodies are entirely different um you know women are really we really kind of a lot of women have been taught that like they have to compete with men they have to be as successful as men or they're never going to be as successful as men and certainly some of the traits that we um that we would class as feminine traits because we live in this society that is so driven by success material things money you know e even if you speak to someone and say like what is what is a successful person they would always say like success is someone that's got a lot of money or success is someone that's like made it to the top of their industry 
they wouldn't it's very rare that someone would say well i think that someone that's successful is someone that is like spiritually rich fulfilled from the inside out you know has a lot of friendships has great connection with their family is on a is on a soul uh, mission is living their purpose you know so people think that successful means money climbing a hierarchy which is that very kind of masculine way and it's it's no one's fault it's just the, it's the culture that we've all been brought up in right mm -hmm. so when we think about like um being in our feminine we tend to think of like surrender softness and because of that because we're so conditioned to like be like go 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 achieve 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 perform perform get to the top make money to surrender we we would think oh my god that's so lazy that's lazy it's weak it's for people that give up it's gonna mean that i'm less powerful um and for women it's actually it actually creates the opposite so i kind of went on my own little experiment with this because i was go 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 i was listening to loads of um you know male entrepreneurs who were very much like coffee 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 hustle your face off don't sleep while you sleep your competitors are beating you and this kind of and i realized that the more i was listening to that the more i was becoming it and the more i was like perpetuating this and my body started to um my body started to respond in not a good way i started to feel exhausted i started to like have no energy um i started to be like irritable um my relationship started to struggle as well because i was not able to ever relax or rest i was just in this like go 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 must achieve a million things by the end of the day or i'm a failure and i really started to feel what i would describe as like the call of the goddess and it was like this this call this like yearning from within of like just like this deep yearning for me to rest for me to do less for me to like be in my be in my beingness rather than in my do 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 mode and really come home to myself as a feminine being so i was having this like call happen and it was telling me to do things like go to yoga instead of do this crossfit workout and like just go and read a book in the middle of the day instead of like bash out all these tasks it was like telling me to soften it was telling me hey just dance go and just do this you know just start dancing but just for no reason just to feel yourself move it was telling me you should paint, take up painting. And I was like, I don't have time for painting. And it was like, no, you need to paint. So it was like giving me these kind of, uh, this kind of deep calling. And I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna give into it and see what happens. Because what I thought would happen was I would be less powerful. I will earn less money. I will lose things in my business. I won't be able to, I won't be able to be who I wanna be in the world. And what happened when I actually listened to that voice and actually honored it was I actually found a deeper sense of power and purpose. And it actually connected me to a, to a feminine fire, um, which I didn't have before. So I think there's this misconception that when you are integrating your feminine side, you are, you are weak, you are surrendered, you're just like doing nothing no it actually connects you to this like deep feminine primal fire inside of you that's actually a healthier way to to really go about your life and that's not to say you abandon all the masculine traits but you really integrate the masculine and the feminine so that you are you know just balanced you're yin and yang and it, it for me it's like an integrated leader is is who we want to be not someone who's only in their masculine or only in their feminine, but someone who's really integrated both energies within themselves. Wow. <laughs> I loved what you said about the feminine fire. Yeah, and I loved your seven archetypes training, which just demonstrated the, the seven different archetypes of the feminine. You know, you've got the mother, you've got the huntress, you've got lots of different parts. And as women as well, we have our moon cycle and we have Mercury retrogrades and we oh, have yeah. all these things happen that like, I, I only literally last month took a day off when I was starting my bleed. And I've never done that before. I've never honored my womb. And it's such a powerful time to just go in and, and honor that part of yeah. you, isn't it? Well, this is it. Because we've been raised in a very masculine culture, women have been taught, you know, take this birth control, get on with it. Like your period shouldn't, doesn't affect you. Like just, you know, just, just take it and carry on, you know, 
put you, you know, it's, we've not been educated about just how magical women's bodies are and the seasons that we go through every single month. You know, in that first couple of weeks of your cycle, you're in the maiden phase and the mother phase, which means you've got a lot more energy to do creative projects. That's when you should be speaking on stages. That's when you should be doing podcast interviews. That's when you should be launching projects. But when you're like in your wild woman phase and when you're coming into like your actual bleed, you, you don't have the same kind of energy to do that. You are really connected to your intuition, but you want to be more of a hermit. So if you try and put yourself in this position where you're leading a presentation or things like this, you're going to feel off, you know, because you're, your body's not actually up for that at that time of the month. So if you're pushing your body to make it up for it, um, you're kind of going against your natural rhythms and your natural cycles. And yeah, absolutely. Like the archetypes work I find to be really powerful because women do tend to think that being in your feminine is just one thing. And some people think it's about just being super receptive and floaty and just kind of like, you know, open and surrendered. And some people think it's about being super sexual and super flirtatious. And once we start to play with the different archetypes, there's a the seven Jungian archetypes that I like to um, share and teach on are the maiden, the mother, the wild woman, the lover, the wise woman, the huntress, and the queen. And I believe we all have all of these energies within us. But as soon as we start trying to just be one of them, trying to restrict ourselves of like, I've got to be like the maiden all the time, or I've got to be like the lover all the time then it's just one more thing that women are trying to be that they're not. <laughs> as soon as we realize we are so many different things and we get to be all of these different things at once and play with these different energies at different times in our lives, then we're really starting to understand the magic of being a woman, which I'm sorry, is just a lot more complex than, than our male counterparts. Yeah, and I can remember growing up very much into swimming and dancing and sport. And I was just like, shove a tampon in, don't even talk about it. Like, and it was like, like this weird thing where someone would like hide their sanitary products because they didn't want to talk about their periods, like this thing that wasn't even spoken about. So there's lots yeah. of shame around that. Um, and I'm just really starting to, to embody that feminine essence and the womb healing. And oh my God, that's a whole other podcast, the womb healing. Um, but also sex as well. You know, I grew up very, very confused about sex, thinking, oh, should I be doing this? Should I not? Having sex quite late, like 18 years old when I, when I first had sex with my boyfriend, and then just never felt comfortable talking about it and felt a bit weird expressing myself. And um, it's only now where I've come to like my middle 30s where I'm like, there is so much more to sexuality than what I ever thought. It's very spiritual and um, it's very creative. Um, and there's so much depth to it than just having sex. Mm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've kind of gone on this journey of like Tantra and deepening my, my sexual healing, because that whole tantric world to me is just so exciting. And when I heard mm. about sex magic and how like orgasms are great for manifesting, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> I'm all over that. So uh. why, why is there so much shame around sex? Well, you know, this is a multitude of things. There's obviously like individual trauma, like events that happen where your boundaries might have been overstepped as, you know, as you were going through. So there's there's five different stages of sexuality. There's your innocence when you're like really, really young, like a baby, a toddler. And, you know, you might like touch yourself and not really know what what it is, right? You're just so innocent, right? Then there's a second stage, which is playfulness, which is when you're starting to kind of just, you know, you might play with yourself and it might feel good. And you don't really have a conceptual, you don't, you don't understand the shame. You don't, you don't have any shame, right? Um, you're just like playful, right? And then there's, you know, that's like as you're a child, then you enter into like the third stage as you're a teenager, which is really about honoring. So consent. Who am I saying yes to? Who am I saying no to? Who gets access to my body? Um, this kind of like respect piece. Then we move into like the pleasure phase, which is when we're really starting to experience, you know, sexual pleasure. And it feels good when this person does this. And this person, I enjoyed sex with this person. And this person wasn't so great. And we start to explore more. 
And then finally, the last stage is the sacredness. When we realize sex is sacred, sex is a special, a sacred energy exchange. And there is like a, um, a, a, a spiritual aspect to it. Obviously, a lot of people don't kind of know that. But I think as you mature, you realize how sacred sex is. And it's not just for everyone. And you stop kind of giving access to everyone. Um, so if any of these phases in your life, these stages of sexuality were disrupted at any point, for example, if you were playing as a child, if you were like touching yourself as like a six year old or something, and your mum like completely um, scolded you and shamed you and made you feel terrible and told you that it was disgusting or something like that, um, you can kind of get stuck in that place. You can get frozen in that space so that even now as an adult, you still feel shame around sexuality. Um, you know, it could be that someone made a comment to you when you were growing up, or maybe when in your first sexual experiences as a teenager, you know, you weren't respected, or you said you let someone, uh, you know, touch you that you actually wanted to say no to them. You know, we, we all, as women, we kind of have this consent piece that I think we've all, um, struggled with on some level of like you know how do I really make sure that my no is a no you know we don't want to lead people on we don't want to give the wrong impression um and there's definitely like obviously following the me too movement it's really been clear like how many women have really struggled with this um and really had experiences in their past where they've felt taken advantage of so there's all of this this there's so much to unpack as a culture and also as individuals can also depend on like what your mum and dad's relationship was with sex like how they brought you up like did they talk about it was that was there like an openness or was it just like this thing that just never got spoken about you know so there's like if we really like are willing to do the work and we want to really reclaim like our full sexual essence we've got to like look back at our entire lives really like at every experience that we had around sex what was our mum's relationship like with sex what was our dad's relationship like with sex did we see anything that we weren't supposed to see how did that affect us you know did anyone shame us what was it like when we you know experienced our friends at school starting to talk about sex or starting to have sex like if we really look back we can start to like piece things together and figure out why we feel certain ways around certain conversations. And obviously, you know, this is the kind of work that I do with my clients as we go deep into like where these blockages are in the body and what they represent, where, you know, some people feel like they, they're, not, they're not safe around certain people or certain uh, kinds of people. And we have to like really dig into like what went on or what feelings are coming up that are, that are making you really fiercely protect yourself against people that are actually safe. Wow. Well, thank you for doing all this work for all these, these women. Um, what is, what's the benefit of women really working through this stuff? What's on the other side of it? I mean, once you like really reclaim your sexuality, I feel like it's such a huge part of our spiritual journey, especially for women, um, because anywhere where there is any kind of shame or taboo or you know something that doesn't get spoken about when we bring that out of the shadows and into the light we are just becoming these like whole integrated uh, versions of ourselves and it really means that we get to really step into this uh, our full goddess selves right we can't like really uh, be in our full power if we're disconnected from the seat of our power, you know, the space between our legs, it's like the most powerful part of a woman. It's where all of life comes from. It's where all of life is created. Our sexual life force is what creates human life, right? So when we're disconnected from that, how can we possibly be fully in our power, fully in our purpose, right? So a woman connected to her sexuality is a woman that's unstoppable. It's a woman that's completely on fire, completely in her purpose, completely in her light. And the more and more women that are in that light, they can, they can shine the light for other women to join them. Um, and it means no more shame. It means that we're not, you know, the generation that comes after us, our daughters, we want to raise them in a different way. You know, we want to be the change. We want to raise them to be 
um, you know, sexually sovereign, for them to understand that they get to express their, con their, their consent, yes or no. We want to make them empowered in their, in their yes, empowered in their no. And we want to make sure that they feel comfortable in their bodies and they feel like they are able to talk about sex in a way that maybe our generation hasn't been able to. That doesn't mean like, you know, people think that when a woman is embodied in her sexuality, she's just like sexually open and available to everyone. No, like you can still show up in your integrated sexuality, like as your queen, um, you know, I still have those strong boundaries, but make friends with, you know, your body and the real seat of your power. And obviously like the more you are, um, attuned to your own body, attuned to your sexuality, and you know how to work with your own sexuality, obviously like all of your relationships are gonna be so much better because you're gonna be coming to every um, romantic relationship or sexual relationship from this empowered space of, I know who I am, I know what I like, I know how powerful I am and I know what I'm bringing to the table rather than I need you to fulfill all of my sexual needs instead of being able to fulfill my own. Yeah, and you know, whenever I look at really successful women, I always feel that they own their power. Like, and I always think that they've got this feminine fire and they know who they are and they're, they're probably embracing themselves sexually on every single level. And I suppose women stepping into this power that must have been quite a scary thing back in the day. Was there something happened that happened in history that kind of shamed women for being powerful? Like, you know, we're all witches, <laughs> we used to be witches. Um, was there anything like that that happened? Yeah, well, obviously there was like all the witchcraft trials, which I think the last one was only like 100 years ago or something. So like we're, we've still got all that in our DNA. You know, we've still got like the trauma of like, how that was for our great grandmothers um, to go through. But which is just another word for wise woman, which is what was called, the wise women were called. And these women were women that were um, exploring their sexuality, exploring um, orgasms, exploring these kind of like um, uh, altering their consciousness, using psychedelics and plant medicines. Um, and, you know, really working with the moon, working with their cycle, working with the magic of a woman, which was very threatening back then to the church and to the, the systems of control. And so, yeah, that, that for sure, like we've really experienced women in their power um, or women exploring their magic, at least to, to not be celebrated, to be, to be, you know, murdered, to be honest. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that we're seeing now, you know, this last, you know, this last wave of feminism has really like shown women stepping more and more and more into their power, but it has been in quite a masculine way because of our culture. So now we're starting to see women actually having the opportunity to step into their power as feminine beings, as well as have this kind of masculine success, be the CEO, be the top of their industry. You know, it's both, we get to be both. And it doesn't mean that men are less or we are taking over from men. It's just, we're just rising up. You know, the, the, the goal is that we all rise together. Not that there's like this battle of the sexes going on. I don't think that helps. I don't think anyone wants that. I think we all want to feel equal and rise together for like powerful relationships in a powerful world. I am with you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> okay so the power of an orgasm then so this is something that I recently discovered in Bali is you know the orgasm and sex magic and how it's so powerful for manifesting like can you tell us a bit more about that yeah I mean there's a few different aspects to it so obviously what you are doing is you're experiencing a surrender you're experiencing um, an expansion in your in your heart you're experiencing some kind of mind shift. So your consciousness shifts. And obviously like there's different kinds of orgasm and not everyone is having like hugely powerful orgasmic cosmic orgasms. And, you know, I don't want to kind of portray that like every orgasm has to be this like mind altering thing that like blasts you off into outer space um, because that's, you know, that's not the case. Um, 
but absolutely like if you really feel into like you know what an orgasm feels like how is that not magic when you really think like how the how that feels like how we get to do that with our bodies and literally like experience an altered state of consciousness through pleasure and love you know the most powerful orgasms that you have are going to be with people with partners that actually open your heart when your heart feels really open when you feel safe when you feel an, an expansion of love in your heart so um yeah it's 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 altering the vibration that you're at which means that everything that you want to call in and manifest is going to magnetize towards you it's you connecting to your life force energy which is so powerful in itself um yeah i i recommend like definitely having some kind of a self-pleasure practice um for any for any woman listening that wants to explore and i would definitely recommend trying to move away from um vibrators and move more onto crystal wands um just because um vibrators can really de um desensitize your clitoris and um it just means that when you are you know crystal using crystals and glass can be a lot more healing for you a lot more healing especially if there's like shame or there's like you've been doing life in your masculine a lot when you go to have your self-pleasure practice you don't want that to feel just like another goal like another to-do list that you've got to like tick off you know it wants to feel like a sensual like love making slow feminine practice yeah this is a journey for me <laughs> for sure um being in my masculine in my career and then you know also trying to master this you know enjoy the moment tantric kind of self-pleasure practice is something that I am there's there's still a bit of a block there for me I must admit but it's something that I am you know working on and I know that this is something that I want to work on so that when I do meet my partner I don't need him for anything like I am a sovereign being I can have my own goddess practice and feel empowered so for anyone who's single who's listening to this like what would your advice be to them to start this journey of self-pleasure and connecting to their feminine fire Mm. yeah well I think if all this sounds like completely alien like I think it's good to start with like small steps so small steps that I would suggest starting with is spending more time naked I think being naked in your own company is such an underrated practice that we all can do, (laughs) Um, but many people don't. And there's a lot of women that I've worked with that have a huge block around being naked. So like, just start with like sleeping naked, like getting used to like going to bed naked, you know, walking around your house naked, um, you know, making your breakfast naked, like just being naked with yourself more is a really good place to start. dance, dancing, like making yourself a playlist. Um, You know, I went through a phase of like growing my business where all I listened to was podcasts. And I forgot that like music is fucking amazing and music brings joy and life and sensuality. And all I was listening to was like business podcasts. I was like, I need to stop this. So yeah, like creating a playlist that helps you tap into that like sensual energy and, you, you know, just playing it when you're like getting ready in the morning, playing it in the shower, playing it when you're in the car. Again, just like a little thing that can help. And then, um, yeah, in terms of like a self-pleasure practice, you know, another great step before that can just be like, how can I just bring more pleasure into my day? You know, whether that is finding, like making sure that you've got time off to like go for a walk on the beach or like sit and read a book or you know eating your meal slowly or you know taking a different route to to work because it just feels nicer or booking yourself in for a massage you know there's different things that we can do that just up our pleasure and make sure that we're living a life that feels more turned on we can embody this like sexual energy throughout our day by just like seeing how we can like flirt with life a bit more see how we can just like if we decide to just live a turned on life and go through our day feeling more open feeling more um connected feeling more um flirtatious then it just helps bring this energy in so that it doesn't feel like i'm just 
I've got to do this self-pleasure practice and it's like this separate thing that I've got to like switch myself on for. If you're already feeling like a goddess throughout the day, the way that you're dressing, you know, maybe instead of just ch chucking on the first thing that you can find, maybe you're like, ooh, what's going to make me feel like a goddess today? You know, there's different ways that we can bring in this, this pleasure and feminine energy into our day so that then when we self-pleasure, it doesn't feel like a massive jump, right? But with the self-pleasure practice, you want to try and think about like, how would I want to be made love to by a partner? Do I want a quickie, you know, or is it, do I really want to be taking my time over? I find that breast massage, you know, just like massaging your breasts is a really good way to um, start opening the heart because the breasts are on top of the heart. So when you just practice massaging your own breasts before self-pleasure, I find it just opens your body up a lot more, helps you just kind of open your heart and be more receptive. And then, um, yeah, you can start, you know, you could take a bath, you could start like uh, rubbing lotion or oil on yourself. And then when you start your self-pleasure practice, you know, have, you know, you can set the scene, you can put music on, you can put candles on, you can make sure that your room's not a fucking pigsty, you know, <laughs> there's, there's all these different, all these different ways that we would imagine we want to experience beautiful lovemaking with another person. Yeah. And I was listening to one of your modules in the Goddess Collective the other day and you said, you know, just wear no knickers. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah. And I've not been wearing knickers since. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? So it's such a good hack. Yeah, yeah. Just like going commando. It like immediately connects you to like this, like sexual um, energy. I love it. It's great. Yeah, and if I think about it, it's like, you wear some cotton knickers, it's like blocking any kind of energy or power. Like, yeah, it makes sense to me now. I think about it. It's like, yeah, and same with like bras. I mean, you know, I live in Costa Rica, so I don't wear a bra, I wear like a bikini or, or, or nothing. But like, for everyone else, like, think about like how restrictive a bra feels. You know, maybe you can, like, you know, have a look at your underwear drawer. Like, is this underwear making me feel sexy? Is it, you know, is this like do I need to clear this clear out the Bridget Jones knickers and the kind of like you know bras that I've had for years that actually don't make me feel sexy mm. yeah I'm actually doing that the weekend I'm getting rid of anything that doesn't embody my goddess multi-millionaire mm -hmm. self oh I love that cool. I was like I'm gonna feel like a goddess put my earrings on dance some music and it just it just feels so so amazing mm. um, and for everyone who's listening to this, who's a bit like triggered by the whole sex and orgasm thing, just, just know that this has come up for a reason to be healed. And you have to listen to this podcast for a reason. And, you know, I only heard about yoni eggs maybe two years ago. Um, and when I heard of a yoni egg, I was like, you put a crystal up your vagina. Like, what is that about? And it's so, it's so amazing how quickly you can adapt to it because it is just such a natural thing. Mm. Um, and yeah just the power of being on this journey has just really helped me step into my power and not outsource my worthiness to anyone else you know redefining what success means to me has completely transformed on this journey and this sexual healing this sexual spirituality is so so connected so mm. you can't be spiritual and not be sexual can you like it's a it's a together thing I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that are on a spiritual journey where sexuality, they still have a lot of shame around that piece of themselves. And there's a lot of, um, you know, I, for what I found, like a lot of women that do, are doing spiritual work, sexuality can be like the very last piece for them. Uh, the, the very last piece that, that needs integrating because it's it's been the piece there's, there's been the most shame around. Mm. But once that is integrated, yeah. that's usually the bit where it all comes together and people really step into their power yeah yeah and it's knowing that we get to do it at our own pace you know I don't want people listening to think that there's this pressure to like you know if you don't have this like amazing self-pleasure practice straight away then you're not going to be you don't get to be spiritual you know it's not like a you know it's not like a, a must but yeah it's just something to it's just something to explore and you get to do it in your own way you know, you get to have your sexuality be reclaimed and have your sexual sovereignty. It doesn't mean that you 
you know, you're then, you know, going to tantric parties and being polyamorous, like that's a part of the sexuality, spirituality scene. It's not for everyone. It's not for me. You know, you can, you can have that sexual sovereignty and, you know, hold out for your king or, or your queen and, you know, have this divine union. So it's not about just being really open sexually, uh, you know, which I think, you know, some schools of Tantra have kind of got a bit of a bad rap for that because there has been like, uh, you know, in the Tantra world, people with the wrong intentions and, you know, people having their vulnerability and their openness be taken advantage of. So I think it's really important that you, you are on this journey for you and you know what your, you know what you want to get out of it for you. Um, and not ever feel like pressure into like, oh, I've got to do this now because this is the right thing to do. You know, if you if you are exploring self-pleasure right now and you love your vibrator and you're having a great time, that's just, that's great, you know. Explore that for a while. And then when you feel like, actually, I want to try something different, then explore the crystals and the jade eggs. You know, it's with, with sexuality, what I found from working with clients is, it's hard to, you can't just like race ahead. So you've got to like meet yourself where you're at. You know, maybe you need to go to bed with a mirror and just look at your pussy and actually just make friends with her because there's like so much disgust and shame there for you. You know, maybe that's where you're at. Maybe just sleeping naked is where you need to meet yourself at right now because that is terrifying. You know, maybe like dancing in a sensual way for yourself is fucking terrifying. And that's what you just need to meet yourself there. So there's no use trying to like jump to jump ahead because that's just gonna it's gonna make you feel unsafe, scared. You've got to really be good to yourself here and really like honor where you're at on this journey. And you know, don't don't feel pressure. I think that there can be like a kind of pressure of like I've got to be having all these different kinds of orgasms, or I'm not like a I'm not doing it right. And you know, I've really found you know from working with women and from being on this journey myself that like this journey is about healing, you know, it's not about you being this kind of like um, kinky sex goddess, if that's not where you're at right now, that you don't need to be that, it's about you actually doing healing work so that you can feel comfortable and confident in your sexuality first and foremost. Yeah, uh, yeah, (laughs) can resonate so much with that. (laughs) I think it was only last year where I was um, I was helping out on my friend's retreat and you know she's very comfortable in herself walking around naked and I was like oh oh my god she's walking around naked and I was like I just kept my clothes on and I was like duh, 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 duh. and then a year later I'm like right when, when can I get naked <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's something that we we always do on our retreats um skinny dipping always is a part of the retreat um, and we end up doing like naked photo shoots at the end of the week as well. And at the start of the week, everyone's a bit like, oh my God, naked, nakedness, skinny dipping in the dark. And it's a little bit intimidating. And then by the end of the week, everyone's just got their kit off and they're just like loving it and posing for photos. And, um, but yeah, I, I think with women, it's like when one, per- when one goes first, it gives everyone else the permission, you know, of like we're all the same. We all, we've all got the same bits, you know, like we're all, we're, we're just, you know, we're all in this together. Indeed, yeah. So your stra- your strategy to create more success in business, let's just have more orgasms and get naked. I like it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely <laughs> that. But, but I would also say like, aside from just the sexuality piece, just working on ourselves as individuals um, rather than just putting all the attention on how can I make more money? How can I grow my business? I think we grow our businesses when we do the inner work on ourselves as people, you know? So sexuality is a part of that, especially if there's shame and wounds around that piece. Um, for other people, it's it's trauma with their family or it's like connecting to um, a daily meditation practice or you know, healing their their traumas with with men or with women, or you know, there's 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 so much inner work to do, which is why, you know, I have the Goddess Collective that you mentioned before, which is my membership for 
women who love personal development and spiritual growth for them to like dive into all these different topics because I think when you are success when you are a successful woman or when you are an ambitious woman it's very easy to focus on like well what can I do that's going to get me ahead and actually the inner work is what gets you ahead (laughs) you know it's doing the inner work that actually helps you transform into the best version of yourself yeah, I always say to my team, it's 80% energy, vibration, and 20% actually action. Yeah. Mel, this has been absolutely incredible. Thank you so, so much. Um, last couple of questions. What is something that is really lighting you up, exciting you in life right now? Ooh. Well, there's a project that I'm currently working on, which I'm super excited about. Um, It's leading on from the archetypes challenge that I did, um, but it's essentially going to be a 12 month experience in 2021 where I'm going to be working with a group of conscious female entrepreneurs and helping them embody their leadership as queens, integrating the masculine and feminine energies, helping them really grow and scale their business uh, by embodying more of their feminine leadership. So I'm really excited to be launching that for the first time. It's going to be called The Queendom. And um, yeah, so that's going to be launching this side of the year. So I'm starting to like piece together like all the all the different moving pieces and what I'm going to include in that. So that's like that's really like lighting me up right now because I just love working with successful, uh, like success oriented, ambitious um, women and helping them like bring more of their like feminine sensuality into their business to help them just like take off like a rocket ship. Wow. Well, I think I'm definitely interested in hearing more about that. <laughs> sure. um, and then one question that I ask all of my guests is what advice would you give to your soul digger self? My soul digger self. I think I would say keep doing the inner work, keep investing in yourself with the best teachers and the best mentors that inspire you. And yeah, keep prioritizing the inner work because that's what really makes a difference. And how can people find you on socials and what have you got going on right now? Yeah, so my website is melwells.com or come and find me on Instagram, which is where I'm hanging out. And that's at I am Mel Wells. So come and drop me a message. Let me know that you found me via this podcast. And yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Mel. I'm going to be watching you inspire many more women around the world. So thank you so, so much. Oh, my love. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure and I can't wait to, uh, can't wait to share this with everyone. Thank you for joining me for another episode. I hope your soul feels inspired and expansive, ready for new levels. And if you want to work with me deeper and you want to know more about my work with Arbon and how I help people to live aligned, please reach out. I also have a Align and Shine five-day course that helps you to live in complete alignment, being in flow and ease and co-creation with the universe. So for more information on that, please head over to the Soul Digger Instagram, the Soul Digger underscore, or my website, kimmeller.co.uk. And until next time, please subscribe, share this with a friend and leave a five-star review. And please let me know what you love best about this episode. And remember, the magic is within.